Hi, Dr. Shook here. It is sauna session number nine. Today is Thursday, September the 3rd of 2015. And today I want to talk about the first thing that you need to do if you're autoimmune and you're trying to naturally dampen the autoimmunity. And that is you need to remove food triggers from your diet. So if you may not know this, but if you're autoimmune, one of the most common things that perpetuates or drives autoimmune conditions are food triggers. And in particular, I'm talking about the proteins in the foods that you're eating. So every food, no matter if it's considered a carbohydrate or if it, no matter what it is, there are proteins within it. Okay. There's some kind of protein that is, that is in that food that you're consuming. So it's not just beef and chicken and fish and things, and things that you think of as meat. Okay. So everything has protein in it. Your immune system, what, what occurs in, in p- patients that are autoimmune, we know from the scientific literature that you have to have had leaky gut or what we call intestinal permeability. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it or you can go to pubmed.gov and type in intestinal permeability. And you'll find all kinds of literature on it. So intestinal permeability is a state where the GI tract, the, the intestinal wall becomes porous or leaky. Foods that you eat begin to break down. As they break down, some of the proteins, which are what make up the food, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, they leak through a leaky or permeable gut lining or GI tract lining into the bloodstream. Now, those large proteins should not be in the bloodstream. What should be in the bloodstream are amino acids. And that's what those proteins are made of. If you think of as a protein as a chain, like a chain, a physical chain that you're holding, each link in the chain is a is an amino acid. You have enzymes that your body makes that are supposed to break that chain or that protein down into the amino acids, which which are smaller. You can imagine the the links of the chain. If you cut a link free, it's smaller than the total chain. That can go through the gut wall, and that's your body uses those amino acids to rebuild. But if the big, the large chain or the protein leaks in, the immune system sees that and doesn't know what it is. So what does your immune system do to things that are foreign? It attacks them. So what ends up happening is, is that that is something that can drive inflammation, drive your immune system, put it in a state of, um, of basically it's always on alert. Okay, it's always looking for things. And we know through a process of what we call molecular mimicry or cross reactivity that those proteins that leak in from foods are very often similar enough to your own tissues that your immune system mistakenly attacks your own body thinking it is that protein leaking in. So here's the thing. You have to remove the food triggers. You've got to get those out of your diet. When you get those out of your diet, you have to heal the gut. Now, in a perfect world, the only thing driving the autoimmunity are food triggers, right? And healing the gut's simple. But the, the fact is, is that people have these compounding problems. They have an overgrowth of bacteria in their gut. They have a yeast infection that's chronic in their gut that causes inflammation. They have parasites. They have they have toxic exposures to chemicals that drive an inflammatory and immune response. They have H. pylori infections in their stomach that cause ulcers and that also drive this inflammatory response. They have low stomach acidity, so it's not protective. They don't have adequate absorption. They have malabsorption or poor absorption because there's not adequate acidity from their stomach into the small intestine. It doesn't stim- stimulate a release of enzymes from the pancreas and the gallbladder. Then they have poor absorption. I mean, there are so many things. And then you can have stress, chronic stress, blood sugar fluctuations up and down. All those things will, will trigger and elevate cortisol, your stress hormone. Elevations of cortisol or suppression of cortisol for a prolonged period of time will thin the gut wall or all your barrier systems, blood brain barrier, lung barrier, GI barrier. So here's the thing. Start with removing food triggers. Okay. Okay, that is where you begin. Patients that I see in my office, they try these elimination diets. And here's the thing. Sometimes those work well for people, right? And they they get improvement. But I have seen so many people that go on elimination diets and they think they're eating a food or diet that is is anti-inflammatory. Here's the thing. I see people that react to chicken to beef, to lettuce, to peaches, to things that you would never think you would react to. And so those are foods that are all, they're very commonly on elimination diets. Here's the thing. If you want to figure out what's driving autoimmunity, you have to do the test. You have to do the test or else you're guessing. And I work with patients that, that we, we take that approach, but those are people that, that can afford to spend a little bit of time on trial and error.
And that's, that's not the case of most of my patients. So here's the thing. Begin with food triggers. Start there and see how you do. Okay? Start with food triggers. It's the easiest thing to address first, right? Or you either come and you, you like can come to my clinic and, and if we can work with you, then we would order very extensive testing. You know, depending on what's going on with you, we can do the test to see what's driving the process. But if you want to get, you want to figure out what's going on, the best way is to get usable, actionable information that helps you to, it's a shortcut, right? The testing tells you what's driving the process. So you do as much testing as you can to get the best information so you can make the best decisions to heal your body as fast as possible. I mean, that's the goal. So anyway, I want to share that with you. Start with food triggers. Okay, Dr. Shook, up here. you have a wonderful day. I'll post another sauna session in a week, week or so. Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking time to learn more about your health. And if there's anything that we can do for you, just let us know. Thanks. Hey guys, Dr. Shook, thank you for viewing our videos. I hope they help you out. If you want to, just subscribe to our channel somewhere here. You can watch a video um, that YouTube's actually selected for you, so hopefully it'll help you out. If you need any other information or resources, just look in the description. We've got links to our website, to our nine lab test guidebook, and everything else that we do. I really appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a great day.